Good morning, everyone. I had a lovely drive out here this morning. I think the whole um, stay at home thing is finally catching on. And we reminded you in the Friday email that you should not be conducting any church business that requires you to defy the stay at home order. This is not about our personal view of what decisions are good or right on the part of our government. It's simply about being respectful and doing our part as a congregation. You would have noticed the Buy a Row campaign in your Friday email, and we also remind you of the annual meeting today at 1 p.m. It's not too late to decide you really have nothing better to do this afternoon. Simply email Tammy or me and we'll send the link to you for that meeting. The season of Easter continues with our opening hymn, a lovely bright hymn of praise number 158, Christ is Alive. to the Lord all our lives. May we sing praise to our God as long as we live. May our meditations be pleasing to God as we rejoice in the Lord. Let us worship the Lord our God. Let us pray. Gracious God, just as signs of life spring forth in the world around us, so too we glimpse signs of your love and grace in our lives. Even in the midst of the world's brokenness, even in the midst of inequality, injustice, even in the midst of our disbelieving and wondering, you appear, sometimes having to convince us that it is you, that we are not alone. Open our eyes and hearts to your presence in our midst, 
We pray in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. God comes to us even in the midst of our doubts and fears, surprising us with his presence, assuring us we have not been forgotten, and promising, as always, gracious love and forgiveness are ours. Thanks be to God. On my week away, I spent some time considering what readings to use over the next few months, and I've chosen to use the lectionary again until summer. We haven't used it, I think, since last summer. So just to note, you may not know this, but if you happen to tune in to more than one service on a Sunday, if other churches are following the lectionary, chances are you will hear the same reading. Reading from Luke 24. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Through these words, God's voice is heard.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we do, O oh God, bow before you and give thanks for all that you have done to us, but too often we pray to you as someone who is afar off, removed from our everyday lives. Remind us, O oh God, that just as you walked with the disciples in those early days after the resurrection, you too walk with us, making yourself known to us in a multitude of ways. Be with us, we pray, and open our eyes and our hearts to your presence. Amen. So it's probably no surprise to those of you who know how much I love my time with my grandson to learn that I spent five out of my eight days off with him last week. There are lots of things I enjoy doing with him, but I think my favorite activity and his is reading. So the evening of our sleepover, we cozied up in bed with a stack of books that he chose and we began reading together. He loves words. He loves to learn new words and then to use them in his conversations. And as we were making our way through one book, the word ignore was part of the story. Now don't ask me the context, I don't remember. But he wanted, of course, to know what it meant. I explained as best I could, and then I waited for him to use it in a sentence, which is part of his normal pattern. But instead, a look of genuine sadness, no, actually a look of horror came over him, and he began to share his dismay. Oh, Nanny, that is awful. I would never ignore anyone. You should never do that. Maybe when I don't know someone, I'm a little shy, but I would never ignore anyone on purpose. We live in a world that has developed a multitude of ways for us to ignore each other. People block us on Facebook. They ghost us wherever and however that happens. Thankfully, I'm naive enough not to even know if I've experienced that one. We believe it is our right to turn our back on one another to protect our own well-being. Well, as I mentioned on Easter, so often when I come to the gospel with open eyes and hearts, I find new things. And what occurred to me this week in reading this gospel lesson is that it's not so much really about the disciples doubting who it was in their midst. It's more about them not even really seeing him, just simply being oblivious to who is in their midst. And it made me wonder if our eyes and hearts and spirits are really awakened, attuned to the presence of God in our midst today. I know you've heard me talk about my passion for systematic theology, the practice of sort of lining up all of your beliefs in a systematic way so that each section of your belief leads to the next smoothly. My systematics professor was actually a member of Royal York Road. So during my time there, as you might expect, he often had challenges to offer to sermons, to hymns, to prayers, always in a collegial way. And one of the objections he had was to the Gaelic blessing with which our annual meeting will conclude today. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open 
your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone see the face of Christ in you. He was not convinced. In fact, he was fundamentally opposed to the notion that our God was embodied in mere human flesh. Now, listen carefully. In Jesus, absolutely that was the case. But in each of us as mere mortals, he said no. But I'm a pretty big fan of that Celtic notion that God is everywhere, all around us, within the souls of those with whom we interact day by day. And I'm going to hold to that belief until dear Bill Fennell and I can get the answer directly from the source one day. Of course, our understanding of God, our belief should not be based upon our own mortal whims and fancies, our own selfish theological needs. But I'm going to suggest that even if it is exactly what I think we need today, I still do believe that God is in our midst that a spark of the divine lives within each of us, and that through our kindnesses, our expressions of hope and love toward others, we do see, we glimpse God's face, we see God's gracious love coming alive in our midst to encourage, to inform, and to direct. And I do actually also believe that is exactly what we need at this moment in time to see us through the loneliness, the isolation, the frustration of our world situation. Along with the divisions caused by our varied reactions to this pandemic and to the ways in which our government chooses to respond. I am also amazed and delighted at the other beautiful thing I am seeing. Almost never do I leave a place of business and interaction with someone without having a very pleasant exchange. Most often, it tends to be the cashier at the checkout. Friday evening, after one of those days where I felt like both a wretched nanny and an irritable colleague, I decided to stock up in as much as I could to avoid maybe getting pulled over and having to explain that I was just on my way to pick up mushrooms for pizza or something. Friday was the night of lineups where I live. I guess everyone felt a slight apocalyptic foreboding or something, and so we all decided to increase our exposure by huddling together in the rain in long lineups. Anyway, by the time I got through the checkout at Sobeys and realizing I had missed one thing on my list, I rifled through my wallet for the 14 cents I owed the clerk. And of course, I spilled all of my other cash on the floor. Do you remember when you were young, maybe some of you are still young enough, that you got behind an old lady at the checkout and it took her forever to count out her change? Well, that was me Friday evening. And I must have looked like I was close to tears. I was, in fact, because the lovely young clerk caught my eye. And she said so kindly, don't worry, we'll all get through this. I needed that as much as all of you have needed the even minuscule offerings of grace that come your way on a regular basis. 
I know you've heard me say that I don't believe God blesses some while withholding the same blessings from others. But alongside that belief, I carry a very strong Celtic belief in God's constant presence in our lives and in our world. Not a presence for which we need to beg or to pray, but rather a presence that simply is innate, embodied within each one of us. So in these days and weeks ahead, when we are very apt to tire of our situation, when it is quite possible that we will be tempted to lose hope, when the isolation might seem too much to bear, let's open our eyes and our hearts to God's presence all around us. And let's also remember to be that presence, to reflect that resurrected light and life for others. Thanks be to God. So apparently we've never sung that hymn here before, but I hope you really enjoyed it. I think it's an absolutely um, beautiful post-Easter spring hymn, so we'll be sure to sing it again. You know, over the past few weeks especially, it has become more apparent to me just how privileged I am. I can sit on my front porch and watch the world go by, I can enjoy the sun on my back deck. I'm starting to work on my garden. Not a bad place or a bad way to be locked down. We are privileged. And God calls us never to forget that and to never turn away from those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Your gifts to this congregation allow our good work of justice and compassion to continue.
In love, you chose to embody God's love and grace in the world. Continue to walk with us, we ask, as a risen presence in our midst. And bless us and all we do and all we offer in your name. Amen. Once again, we spend a short time in prayer and reflection, reflection, thinking of the ways in which perhaps we actually ignore God's presence in our midst. Let us pray. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Ah, Holy One, we come to you today, indeed, right in the midst of our wondering and our disbelieving. There are days when we admit we just don't know. We don't understand why things happen in our world. We don't know where you are in the midst of the pain and suffering. We don't know how much you are able to direct to control, to change the course of history. Everyone claims that you are on their side. And yet we know you are not a God who spares some at the expense of others. Even as we watch for signs of major transformation in our world brought about by your grace, may we not neglect the everyday wonder of your presence the touch of a hand, the phone call, the patience of a clerk. All around us, creation proclaims the wonders of your creative hand, and our heads hang in despair, missing the beauty of the world with which we have been gifted. Encourage us, Holy One. Remind us that our faith is all about new life, rebirth, and renewed energy to face the days ahead. So our closing hymn today is one of my favorite uh, hymns, but I do remember it's not the favorite hymn of someone out there, maybe someone in the choir, so I really do apologize, but something has stirred my Celtic soul today. Our closing hymn is a reminder that it is to Christ we look for direction and for hope.
look upon the rainbow and praise God who made it. Very beautiful it is in the brightness thereof. And unmindful of worldly honor, may we fight the wrong, uphold God's rule, and serve God to our lives' end. Thank <laughs> you.